This is Switzerland and my trip to Trifbrücke. It's a very popular hike in Switzerland because it's very easy while you also get incredible views. It's a lovely stroll in the mountains and as always all the information about the hike, cable car, hütte will be shared in the description below. But keep in mind it's not the best place to be if you're afraid of heights. My name is Frederick and these are my adventures. I went to Triftbrücke, which is it's roughly 11, 12 kilometers, depending on what route you're taking, and it's 900 meters of ascent to get there. On the way down, though, you could, in theory, take a the Triftbahn, which is a gondola going down. So we're just enjoying the autumn, the nice colors, and the big snowy mountains up there. So super pretty scenery today. Excited. If you instead take the cable car then it's half of these stats, except you still have to do 700 meters of ascent and descent. We started early to get from Zurich to Gudmund, where the hike starts. I've been asked in the comment sections about day hikes, where you have a car, and this is probably the perfect day excursion. It's already autumn, and given it's brisk mornings, and after three weeks of constant rain, we had no clue what to expect. For those who watched my week during the Alpine Passage Trail, the day we left the mountains, there were a snowstorm coming in, and that was high up in the mountains. That snow has now also made it all the way to the altitude, which we're heading to today. Fortunately enough, it's been raining in Switzerland for, I don't know, two, three weeks, like everywhere else. All of a sudden, the sun came up. <laughs> it's beautiful. So you see this gorge right behind me, and then the snow from the mountain, the new snow that came this year, starts dripping down the mountain behind me and on top of me apparently as well. We decided to walk all the way up instead of taking the cable car. It's not that bad and if you don't, you're gonna miss these views. And if you're early and the first person hiking on the path, you have a higher chance to see animals. I actually learned that while working at a camp in the US and while we canoe down the Algas River. It's in northern Maine. If you were first on the river there, you got to see amazing pictures of animals' lives around the river. And that also actually happened here. We got to see a huge group of ebex. Unfortunately, I was super slow with the camera. But if you want to see some footage of ebex, you can click on the video up in the right corner right now for when we cross path with ebex. You also have it in the description below in case you want to look at it after the video. We finally made it up to the cable car station, and we've done three kilometers at this point, which is half the distance. A ticket to this cable car will cost you 24 Swiss francs, which is roughly the same in dollars. As you can see here, now in mid-October, we have snow up here, but we brought hiking sticks and proper boots. In the summer, you can totally do this with sneakers, but the more, let's say, extreme the environment is, the more and better gear you need. I wouldn't recommend people to take hiking on icy routes like this lightly, unless you know what you're doing, of course. Once passing the cable car station, half of the way is including sliding around on slippery ice. This is of course dependent on which season you go here, but this is more general advice, regardless of which route you take. And finally, there it is, Triftbrücke. It's located with massive mountains around, and that, together with layers of snow, makes it very impressive. I've watched a few videos of Triftbrücke in the summer, and I would say it looks rather lame in comparison when there's snow. But if you're going to continue up the mountains, I wouldn't do it when there's too much snow, of course. Then the summer months are way better. But keep in mind, most of the routes up here are considered mountaineering routes, so not hiking routes.
time again for the thing I hate the most in the world. We are stepping onto the brook. It's our turn. We started walking. It started wobbling. This one is made of like wood as well, so it's not even metal as the last one. The Triftbrooker is 150 meters or 560 feet, and the height is 100 meters or 330 feet. Roughly 20,000 people come and visit this place every year. However, of course, less at this time of the year. An earlier bridge were built in 2004, but the glacier started to melt too much, so it was no longer high enough to take visitors up to the Triftbrücke Hütte. And I'll tell you a bit more about that Hütte in a second. This replacement bridge was built in 2009, and it's one of the longest and highest pedestrian bridges in the Alps. So we're up here, we've done the bridge. I'm done, I don't have to do it again. That's why I'm smiling so much. It's beautiful in background. And this year's snow came early. So what you would think about, or what you should think about, if you plan a trip here and you don't live here, is that some years, so last year it was sunny, warm, you know, 20, 25 degrees until this time of the year. The mid-October just cut over and sort of gets cold. For the past month now, it has been raining, it has been cold, and uh, the snow came in the mountains fairly, fairly early, I, I would say. Uh, I, I would assume Swiss people might disagree with me there, but you know. One point I want to cover here is this brücke that we have on the right here, the left of you, over there, is very famous. A lot of people go, go here in the summer. So if you want to go by the Rodelbahn or the, uh, the cable car, you should pre-book because otherwise it's impossible to get a spot and then you're, you might be stuck up here. On the other hand, we just hiked up here, right? And it's not a hard hike. It's a very simple hike. You'll see that in this video. It's a very, very simple hike. So don't bother about... My friend is up there. Uh, don't bother about caring that you, you know, be scared that you can't get up here unless you use that cable car. It's a super simple hike. There are two cabins up here, Chifthütte and Wubdighütte, and we'll pass the latter one soon. But Triftitta is located higher behind the lake on 2,500 meters, and it's a bit more of a challenge to get there. Halfboard is 91 Swiss francs, or similar in dollars, of course or 48 for only a bed, and it's very easy to book online. Taking this higher route, passing Wubdeghütte, is a bit of a climb, and it's not required if you only came for the bridge, but it is rather nice up here. I've had a bit of a pause from making videos because I've had a lot at work, but please subscribe and I'll try to make more videos frequently again. My initial goal was to help and inspire at least one person with good information about cool hikes. And I think I've achieved that given the comments I got. I hope also you find this helpful and don't forget to write in the comments if you have any questions or want any more information. I've probably done more than 100 hikes here in the Alps before I started making videos. And lastly, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out and for you, it's just a simple click. Believe it or not, for me, it actually means a lot, and I check it every day. I really like this hike. For me, it was very relaxing, and we were never in a real hurry in order to finish. If you go here, I'd recommend to bring food and drinks and just chill by the bridge. There are plenty of picnic places, and the view is very enjoyable. Therefore, I rate this hike overall experience as an 8 out of 10. It's very easy to get up here, and the views are actually pretty sweet. I'll give it an 8 out of 10 for seaworthiness too. If the hike would have taken you further into the mountains, I would have actually rated it even higher. But as you can see, you only ever get to the edge of entering the mountains. That said, it is super cool. If you go from the car park, I would say that the physical effort is a 5 or maybe 4 out of 10. You do have a bit of a climb in the end, especially if you want to go to the Hütte that we pass, and I would totally recommend it. But given you have so much time, you can just take it slow and you'll be fine.
One thing I must say though, is on the way down, we took the eastern side of the valley. <laughs> Don't go there. It's an annoying way to go, and you literally see nothing. Which is why I don't have any footage of that path. And we're back in the car to drive back home. If you're interested in more hikes, please check my other videos out. I will also make condensed compilation videos in the future, which will make it easier for you. Thanks for watching and goodbye!